rain loving salmon eating nerds. <laughs> That's all they got out here. They love their fish. They like man. salmon, coffee, and rain. I'm kidding, come on. Seattle's great. You guys got the Space Needle and, uh, and the Space Needle. Aww. That's great. No, come on. I will, I will continue to shit on this one horse town all night, but <laughs> everyone knows that the Pacific Northwest has the best Glass Cannon Nation fans in the world. It's true. In the it's world. true. And about New York. Now, uh, I'm pretty fired up. We are in the middle of PaizoCon right now. This is like our, feels like our eighth show we've done in three days. Yeah. Sounds about right. We're a little yeah, we're punchy. Doing a, we're doing a two-a-day today. It's a two-a-day. It's second yeah. live show today. It's like double sessions, you know? <laughs> High school football. Uh, stay loose. As usual, I have no idea what decisions these guys are going to make. Uh, but knowing this adventure path as I do, and I'm sure there's people out here that know this adventure path, tonight has all the makings of a really fun fucking sesh. I'll tell you this much. If I had better, more creative and entertaining players, I could almost guarantee you'll get at least half of your money's worth tonight. That's my guarantee. It's a pretty good number. It's a pretty good number. Get them, yeah, you Give them hell, the valley. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. My mom, everybody. <laughs> my mom flew all the way out to Seattle from Boston. She's, she's a heavy smoker. It's like the... <laughs> <laughs> Give them hell, Troy. <laughs> it's, like the, it's like the third act of glory. <laughs> With one notable difference. <laughs> just, just one. Just one. <laughs> if you close your eyes, it's pretty much glory. Uh, now, I hate to be the rules lawyer of the group. I don't want to be that guy. I usually leave the rules lawyering to Joe. Because even though he doesn't know the rules of the game, he's exceptionally well at talking over and down to people. So, that's why we have him do it. That's, you mean like a lawyer? Like a real lawyer. Exactly. But, you speak confidently whether you know it or not, and it doesn't matter what you really know. Nobody's better than that than you. This is my nightmare. <laughs> but having done a half a dozen of these shows now, I feel, like, I feel like we need to set some Glass Cannon Live ground rules to really enhance the GCL experience for everyone. And not just the people that have been drinking since 9 a.m. that came here. Right? I think, I think they're right there. I think they're it's right mostly there. that group, it sounds like. Yeah. Skid, watch your... Keep them in your peripheral. Right? <laughs> I'll, keep, I'll keep my good eye on you. <laughs> I want you to enjoy this show in a way that you will tell your great, great, great grandchildren about via hologram or something. <laughs> or if you're like me and plan to be cryogenically frozen, you can tell them in person. Wouldn't that be nice? Rule number one. Will you stop sending us shots? <laughs> Please? Just send beer. <laughs> you can't go wrong with an ice cold Budweiser, right, Skid? I agree. With the, each of us could drink a case of beer and be fine, but yeah. do you realize there are people on this stage that are heavily medicated? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to take the express lane to drug town. <laughs> we can take the surface route. We can take route. the scenic route. Just take the scenic route. Be more enjoyable in the long run. <laughs> we don't need to speed our way to there. So please, just save your money. You know, we'll just buy a bucket of Bud Lights. If at the end of the night there's 40 beers sitting on the stage, I feel like everybody wins. Yeah, I agree. I'd like at least an 8.3% Imperial IPA, oh, though. That's right. Very well, hoppy. Yeah. You had to go So there. you guys know the best beers in Seattle, which makes the best beers in the world, well, right? Well, not everyone has the... Not everyone has the tolerance of a frost giant, Grant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little inside gamer humor. Uh, Any gamers in the audience tonight? Any gamers out there? <laughs> uh, rule number two, and there's only two rules. Now, I can't pinpoint exactly when this happened. It was somewhere between Chicago and Albuquerque when the audience decided they wanted to be part of the show. <laughs> I have that same problem with Matthew and Grant all the time. <laughs> but just like I tell them before the show, if you want to yell out and talk and be a part of it, 
be 100% sure that what you're saying is gonna be funny. He literally says that to us. Otherwise. <laughs> and, then med- and then edits out his own duds. <laughs> yeah. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. They're not all winners. Be 100% sure. Otherwise, don't say anything. And that is why, thankfully, we don't hear a lot from Matthew and Grant on these shows. Oh, yeah. Oh, Troy, oh, real mean. They are hurt. They're not your close friends. <laughs> Speaking of loud, obnoxious giants with hands the size of Easter hams, how are you, Grant Berger? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm happy to be in Seattle, Washington, yeah! baby! Yeah! Grant, I think you could be one of those guys at Pike Place Market that could just throw the fish. Yep. Throw it, but not catch it because I have no eye-hand no. coordination. No, but you'd throw it to fucking Vancouver. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey, like BC, through, how you doing? Just like through an old woman's chest. Catch! <laughs> right <laughs> through the chest. <laughs> He's very strong. Uh, Matthew Capitacaza, how are you tonight? Matthew Capitacaza, huh? I'm doing good, Troy. How are you? Don't worry about it. I say this everywhere we go, but I think you would do really well here. Why is that? Well, I'm just looking for you to move so I can replace you with any warm body. (laughs) Fair. So if one of these days you're like, you know what, you're right, LaValle. I'm out of here. I can post an ad for looking for anyone that knows Pathfinder. <laughs> this has, explains a lot of the past five years of my life. Yes. <laughs> Do you have a pulse and no Pathfinder? It's a step up. Uh, his wife's in the audience tonight too, right? Yeah. Yes. Caitlin! All right, there she is. Thank you, Caitlin. Caitlin, if you're All gonna right. scream, yeah. Make 100% sure it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> is this a funny yeah or a so-so yeah? Yes. It's a judgment call. I apologize. He must disappoint you on a daily basis as well. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys. We were just talking about before the show. Usually, as you all know, Troy wakes up on the morning of a show and is just insanely cruel. He's like, he's like gets going. That's how I warm up. But today, he's been like ultra pleasant yeah. and well-adjusted. So I guess this is where it all comes out. I'm saving it. <laughs> Skid, how are you? Skid Ma, everybody. I'm great. Thank you. Thank you all. Skid, I imagine you were a big Seattle Supersonics guy growing up. Big Sean oh, Kemp yeah, fan. Huge. It's Sean Kemp. He had all the McDaniel. jerseys. He's oh, actually yeah. one of Sean Kemp's children. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm one of his yes. many. Yeah. That can't many be right. Children, yes. That can't be right. Uh, do right. you know why they were called the Supersonics? Why? No, I'm asking. You, you're, you're a fountain of basketball trivia. Wait, what, what was the question? Why are they called the Supersonics? Oh, uh, because of the, uh, the World's Fair or something. Is that true? Napoleon. Pro- it was because of Napoleon. It's yeah. probably because the Seattle Space Needles only sounded slightly stupider. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, a lot of Supersonics fans in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, know I don't why. like East Coast guys making fun of my town. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't worry, that team doesn't exist anymore. I don't know why you're I so know. angry. I'm just, they want a team here. I, know, I don't I trust know. any team, that, any city that only has one professional team. That's just me. Yeah, but we got the 12th man here, Troy. No football and fans. And two professional teams. Not surprising teams. at all. Wrong crowd. And, and two pa- professional right. teams. No crossover between football and Pathfinder. Amazing. Who knew? Try as you might, it has never worked. <laughs> Joe, you old sack of potatoes, how are you? I'm so good! <laughs> I, I'm very hard on you. I think I'm hardest on you than anybody. I think you're hardest on Matthew than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, there's empirical evidence. They don't hear what goes on behind closed doors. That's true, that's I'm true. Very hard, but I, you know, I woke up today and I said, I wanna, I wanna go out of my way to try and find something nice to say because you've been putting in a lot of work with the network, and you've been working really hard, and so I, I said, I wanna say, I wanna say something really nice. Really nice. Yeah, mage armor, About I just cast know. it. <laughs> I know what's coming. That's a, it's not a surprise round. Uh, <laughs> I woke up this morning, I was sitting in the hotel, and I was like, I, I got two hours, so I gotta be somewhere, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out. And I just ran out of time. I really didn't. <laughs> I had to be somewhere, and I was, I was racking my brains. <laughs> you got a hell of a beard. I think it's an okay beard at best. 
<laughs> it's, that's not fair. It's a terrible beard. I'm sorry. I got nothing. You know what? In Indianapolis, I'll have something for you. Okay, thanks, yeah. buddy. Everybody warmed up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, you know I'm what? ready, I'm ready. There is just too much to do tonight. We need to jump into the pretend Zeppelin. Huh. Fasten your seatbelts, Matthew. All right. Stow your tray tables, Grant. Okay. Sit in your upright position, Skid. No, I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up, damn it. Hmm. Let's get this show on the road. Oh, Let's baby. jump. <laughs> we are about to go on the journey of the imagination. Oh, man. After spending days dodging vicious creatures and terrifying haunts, running around what you now know to be a place called Briarstone Asylum in Ustalov, you finally enter the relative safety of a chapel dedicated to many deities, chiefly among them, the goddess Phrasma. The Lady of Graves. The Lady of Graves. This chapel is full of survivors of a recent revolt, a patient uprising by followers of another patient of the asylum named Ulver Zandalus. Zandalus sees. Praise, praise. Thank you. Praise, praise. Words, Words fail. fail. They call themselves the Apostles in Orpiment. A woman by the name of Winter Klaxa, played by the incomparable Olivia Wilde. A sister of the Maiden's Choir Cathedral in Caliphas. She's gathered these survivors together comprised of both former asylum workers and patients who were able to find refuge when all this shit went down. She tells you what she knows, that she was here to investigate the whereabouts of Count Hasterton Lowles of Versex County, who mysteriously abandoned his post and may have had dealings right here at Briarstone Asylum. She came here, consulted briefly with the administrator, Dr. Eliage Losandro, and then got caught up in this madness, which has shook the very foundation of the building, opening, opening a veritable rift between the dream world and the material plane. After impressing her, she, she then enlists the four of you to try and find a way out. They're running out of supplies, Joe. They're running out of firewood, Grant. The only way out she knows of is past this wall, which is now covered with yet another manifestation of the fissure between worlds. You go to that wall, rip down the curtain, which was hiding it from the children to reveal a blinking, watery eye that also sprouts fangs and cries ammonia, as most wall eyes do. James, the rat folk, elder mythos scholar wizard, brilliantly, in very un like fashion, <laughs> conjures a mirror image of the wall so that it sees itself and it then withers away to reveal a door leading to the admissions area of the hospital. There are several doors in this large, clearly once beautifully adorned room, including the doors out. You pry those swollen doors open to reveal, not surprisingly, endless clouds of yellow fog that you've seen any time you've looked outside a window. Even the windows in the chapel, stained glass though they were, you could see this roiling fog. In the distance, you see strange shapes moving about and the sounds of an endlessly churning stomach. Before you can take it all in, and a numerous, and a numerous, an enormous, tumorous mass of hungry flesh comes oozing out of the fog, hell-bent on adding you to its pile. As the resident coward of the group, a disenchanter war for poor priest, who we now know as best friend, he almost falls to the creature, but thanks to the timely firebombs of the mad scientist alchemist Sheila. Good day. Thank you, you champion mates. Thanks to your firebombs, its regeneration is slowed long enough for you to dispose of the creature and go back into the admissions area, but best friend, you're feeling a little off, like something was contracted from that run-in with the hungry flesh. 
sadly, as you report to Winter, there is no safe exit out of the building. So you must continue your investigation of this place to figure out how and if there is a way out. The next room you walk into looks surprisingly beautiful. Artwork covering the walls, a large picture window that must have once looked out on a picturesque view. You saw it when you were outside. You saw said window. You also see a bird cage shaped like a mansion with taxidermic birds sitting inside. A stuffed elk's head above a hearth and two dead bodies. One was clearly beaten to death by someone or something and one is impaled on the antlers of the elk above the hearth. As our psychic detective investigator, Mrs. O'Lady, <laughs> as she stoops down to examine the battered corpse, you all get the sensation that the floor is dropping out from underneath you. Why don't we roll for initiative? Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Guys, oh. you're only in Seattle Start once a right year. Off. Let's do a little niche. Sorry. I'm very, I'm very drunk. <laughs> very, very, I'm incredibly drunk. It's quarter after seven. So. I know. I, I got a late starter, right? <laughs> it's 10.15 back home. That's right. uh, James, what do you got? Wow us. 24. Boom! 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 Shaboom! Boom. Mrs. O Lady. 19. Mm. How nice. 14. <laughs> Sheila. Sheila also got a 19, oh, mates. Up, 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 up. I have a plus two. Uh, well, I've got a plus six, my lady. That's more. You just got Sheila. Whoop. What about old best friend? Best friend got a 12. Oh, you're my best friend. All right, I need everybody to roll. Roll perception check. Roll a perception check. Skid, what'd you get? Uh, 15. 15, not bad. Uh, what about you there, uh, best friend? 20. 20. Uh, James? 12. Mrs. O'Lady? A 26. Oh, wow. 26. Uh, Skittles, what'd you get again, buddy? 15. 15. I hate, I hate that, I hate that. <laughs> please, please stop doing that. Taste the rainbow, buddy. I, I don't want anyone to taste my rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> they'll taste it and they'll like it. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, all right. Uh, who got above 20? That would be me. Her. Oh, oh, these two? What? Just exactly 20. Just me. exactly 20. Uh, best friend and Mrs. O'Lady. I, I ended last session by saying maybe all of you or, or those of you who hit a perception heard a cheep, 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 cheep. But Mrs. O'Lady and James hear that cheep, 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 cheep sound turn into the sound of like a screeching klaxon. And you get to act in a surprise round. Oh, Ooh. I know what this is! Let's go to videotape! <laughs> it's a lot less exciting. When... <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, so this is the room. Uh, best friend, you're standing right next to a door leading out. I would just open it and run out personally, but I don't want to run your character. I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Mrs. O'Lady, you have the floor here. Oh. Right. Um, uh, yes, you have the floor. So I got the sensation that the floor was dropping out. Get the sensation the floor is dropping out, and that cheap, cheap, cheap sound started becoming super shrill, like a, a much larger bird screaming at you. Uh, do I have a sense of where that sound is coming from with my 26 perception? Mm, no. <laughs> but you wish you did. <laughs> Fair. Um, but the floor has not actually dropped out from under me. Do you look down? Well, am I standing on floor? Or am I like, what, what's happening in the room? Is he Wiley E. Coyote? I mean, am I like running in the air? And, <laughs> and you hold up a sign, yikes. Uh, you look down, you are still on the floor, but you, you're starting to feel lighter. I feel like I'm falling. Yes. Uh, can I do a knowledge check to see what yeah, might, sure. might be happening? What knowledge would you like? Oh, you tell me. 
I mean, I got knowledge for days. Do you? I got you got a, knowledge relige? Uh, I do not. However, thought you had it for. So you have knowledge for day. Really. Well, I'm worldly. Day. <laughs> One day's worth of knowledge. <laughs> I'm worldly, so I get to roll. I can roll a skill check that I'm untrained in, and I can roll twice and take the better result. Oh. Ooh. All right, so uh, do that. Uh, 13. Mmm. Mmm. What do you want? Is there anything particular you want to know about what's happening? What is happening? <laughs> Oh, that's a good <laughs> Your lack of description good question. is staggering. I, I want good the question. GM to describe this further. Good question. <laughs> Let me stall in my own way. <laughs> How about you yes and my stalls? <laughs> I rolled several dice to do I so. I will tell you this. Something is happening. And it doesn't feel good. All right. You've now experienced this, uh, if not two, maybe three times, there is a haunt manifesting in the room. Okay, yeah. You know that you don't really have the power to deal with haunts in this surprise round. If we're walking back and forth between explaining what's physically happening and explaining the meta of the game, you don't have the ability to deal with this. In the surprise round, you need to use positive energy to try and neutralize the haunt if you know the source of the haunt. I don't have any positive energy. I just have a positive attitude. (laughs) That will get you far in life, but... There's positive energy radiating off of you right now. Does (laughs) that count? I think so. Yeah. You also know that some haunts are susceptible to other things, but you don't know what this haunt is susceptible to. Okay, not knowing the source of the haunt or uh, what how it's operating or manifesting, Mrs. O'Lady is going to use the surprise round to move to the edge of the room. The edge of the room. Yes. Best friend. Best friend knows that best friends are a binary, not a singularity, and I need a best friend to survive, so he's going to stay in the room and he's going to roll a knowledge religion even okay. against his best judgment. Ooh. Uh, 14. Knowledge religion. 14. We're second level, people. Calm down. <laughs> Those fucking sneering laughs. Really get it, my... <laughs> you wouldn't like it when he's angry. Trust me. You, again, it sounds like these sounds are coming from all around you, but you do see a, a mansion in the shape of a birdcage full of birds. It's the only link in your head okay. to what's happening in this room. Now, it's a surprise round. You can either take a standard or move action. Okay, I'm going to then, with no range on any of my abilities for positive energy, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move right up to the birdcage. That's a bold move. Yeah. I like it. Where is it on the map? Can you show me? It's over there. This one? Yeah. (laughs) Right there. There, thank you. So that's where best friend moves. That's where best Wait, friend stop moves. doing that. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> it's like stop. pebbles in a pond. <laughs> <laughs> Passive sonar. <laughs> um, James, roll a will save. Uh, huh. Questione. Yes. Is this a... No. Oh, man. But Uh, I appreciate the question. Oh, man. I feel like I want to do this thing. Mm. You could Uh, just roll the will save. (laughs) Just throwing that out there. Roll the will save. Do you have a power that allows you to not roll the will save. Yeah, well, basically, I can't find it, God. Is there a, uh, is it a fear effect? Or uh, mm. something that would make me confused or, or suffer fear uh, in some way? Uh, I don't think it is technically a fear effect, no. Okay, then I'll just roll the will save. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye, James. Another combat we won't do. Nine. Ooh. Definitely a fail. 
You see Mrs. O'Lady and best friend get the jump on whatever's happening in this room. They're able to hear those cheeps, those chirps turn into the shrill sound of a much larger bird and they're able to react. Mrs. O'Lady moves to the outskirts of the room. Best friend moves right up to the cage thinking that maybe the cage itself is the source of this. Meanwhile, you levitate 10 feet into the air out of your control. Oh no. And you look down at that corpse that looks beaten on the floor and you think to yourself, it looks like a corpse that was lifted and slammed to the floor. Lifted oh, and slammed no. to the floor. Lifted and slammed oh, to the floor. No. Oh my god. I'm because panicking. That's how your cousin died. That's how you know that that's what happened. <laughs> it's in his backstory. <laughs> Let's go to round one, for old time's sake. It is going to be James's turn. You're floating 10 feet in the air and you can't control it. What do you want to do? Uh, uh, nothing, I, I, nothing. I was, seriously, nothing. I don't, there's nothing I can do. Uh, oh, well, knowledge religion. First, I'm gonna do a knowledge religion. Okay. See if I can figure something out about how to solve this. Mm. Come on, O'Brien. God! 17. 17. It's pretty good, yeah. I, Pretty why, good. why are you upset? Yeah. <laughs> You're, you just reflexively just curse any of that. Damn it! Ah. Like every time you roll a die. Like sometimes the rolls are I good. I just hate single digits. I hate single digits on the die. Yeah, but some there are some higher single digits. Right. <laughs> and when you have a plus 12 like eight, to that single digit. But like eight, yes. for example. Eight is like a higher, or nine even. Eight is Like great. high single digit numbers. Uh, all right, so you also know this is a haunt. Uh, and you, you understand how haunts work, but you also know that your basic run-of-the-mill haunt, you do not have the tools available to deal with it. Technically. Unless there is some other weakness, but you don't know. Yeah, because it's DC 20. That's why I'm angry, <laughs> because it's DC 20. Or 25. Um, I'm going to... Uh, well, can, I can't move, right? But can I attempt to move? Uh, you're levitating uh, as per the levitate spell, but it's being cast on you. So, yeah, so you uh, can you can just kind of like you can move scramble. yourself if you push. Like you can push off a wall. I'm next to a wall. Uh, you're next to a wall. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, can I try to direct myself to the door? Try to like push off and just like ease the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> just sort of like see ya, and just like. <laughs> Roll a uh, strength check. Yes. <laughs> you really got to push, man. How about intelligence for angling? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, it's not a game of billiards. Exactly. Yeah. It's trigonometry, <laughs> man. <laughs> it is a game of billiards. It is. You still have to move the stick. <laughs> but my weight is next to nothing now. All right, how about a strength check? Yeah. You win this round. You win this round. It's uh, nice that you're able to compromise. Good like compromise. This. Yeah. All right. I'm Come on. Good roll, not James. Fair. Good roll. One good roll. Let's do it. There we go. Hey. Ten. Ten. For I James. And I saw an eleven on the die. So. Uh, minus Stop looking one. at my die rolls. Ten. Eh. Ah. You push yourself, but you don't. You go in the direction of the door, but you don't angle yourself down. So you are still floating, ten feet above the door and will most likely be killed in this combat. Wait, wait, but I'm heading, moving toward the door. You're moving toward the door, so but I move not- like half my speed? Half your speed. Okay. Sheila. Uh, Sheila says, James, no, don't come down. It's dangerous up there. <laughs> also, don't I want you think I want to? I don't know. I thought you could have done it voluntarily. I don't know what goes through your head. I'm about to be smashed to pieces. Well, I hope not. He's just like floating there talking to him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going um, to be smashed to pieces, you see. <laughs> this I also, is horrifying. <laughs> I want to point out that uh, a friend of the show, uh, Todd One Out on Twitter, uh, uh, who many of you know, evidently, uh, is uh, he's an Australian listener, and he sent me a Google spreadsheet of helpful Australian slang phrases. So... <laughs> cool. So, uh, let's see. So... So, uh, Sheila says, uh, uh, 
You look like you're a few roos loose in the top paddock, mate. <laughs> a few roos loose in the top paddock. And he's going to try to grab James. Okay. And, uh, and pull him back towards the door. All right. Uh, give me a... a whew. All right, you're going to have to jump. So give me an acrobatics check to start. Oh, boy. I'm sure <laughs> one of your highest skills. Uh, seven. Is seven. that sufficient? It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> if ten was good. Uh, no, you, you, you jump up and you just kind of like graze off of his foot. I'm not going to count that as your standard action, though. Okay. Uh, for my standard action... I'll count that as your full round action. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that will be... That'll cost you two rounds worth of Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I don't, for standard action, he's going to throw a bomb at the corpse. Oh, no, at the birdcage. So throw a bomb at the bird, bird cage. Corpse or bird, bird cage? Bird, bird cage. At the bird cage, as which, much as, based on the, uh, the bird cage being so close to the wall, that would put uh, Giant McGee over here in the blast radius. That's not my birth name, and you know it. <laughs> All right. If I don't have it written in front of me, I forget your name. Grant. <laughs> it came to me. It just came to me. Grant. Uh, is there a way you can angle it that won't include best friend? Uh, I actually, yeah, I can throw it against the back wall and just catch the edge of the birdcage in its blast. Okay, so you want to you want to use the birdcage as part of the splash damage as opposed to trying to hit the birdcage directly. Yeah, yeah. Just see what it does. Anything. All right. All right. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. Okay. It's AC5 if you're just aiming for a, a square. So, yeah, you definitely hit that. And, oh, and that is, let's see, that is six points of damage. Six points of, of fire damage. Of fire damage. The birdcage crumbles, and James falls to the ground. Hey! Yeah! And you take one point of damage. Yes! All right. Wow. One, I solved I'll a puzzle. That. I have never solved a puzzle in my entire life. Wow. Good job, Skid. Uh, James, 10 feet up, 1d6. I rolled a one. Yes. It's as if you rolled it for me. Yeah. Luck is on our side tonight. That birdcage crumbled was susceptible to physical damage, and it ended the haunt, at least for now. There are two dead bodies in the room. There's a lot of shit in this room. What do you guys want to do? Uh, Mrs. Zaledi would like to go back and examine the body on the ground again. James? Uh, James wants to examine the body that's ritualistically hung in the antlers of the elk head. BFF? BFF will assist Mrs. Zaledi in looking at the body with any heel checks he could help with. Okay, and Sheila. Sheila will just give a real good positive vibes to everyone doing actual work. <laughs> just what I do in real life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start with uh, Mrs. O'Lady and best friend. You guys are looking over this corpse that's been beaten to death. I'm sure James can be like, it's pretty clear. This thing was like raised, thrown, raised, thrown, raised, thrown. Um, do they have anything on them? Do they have any tattoos or any markers or any identification on the body? There's a wallet. Oh. oh. With good. a Delaware license. Uh, oh, uh, whoa. Do I recognize the face from any of the personnel files that we were looking at in the last session? No, you don't. You don't recognize the face. There doesn't seem to be uh, any uh, sort of identifying marks about them. Uh, you search the body. Roll a perception check. Twelve. Five. Yeah. You, you, don't, you don't find anything. Mm. Um, you do see that they're wearing stained yellow robes, similar oh. to Prey's shields. Oh, the oh. Orpiment. The, right? The Apostles in Orpiment. Yeah. Orpiment's a funny word, isn't it? It is. It is. How do you spell it? O-R-P-I-M-E-N-T. Mm. Hmm. So these... But it's yellow. 
Yeah, some sort of like ambery <laughs> yeah. situation. Yeah. Orpiment is a deep colored orange yellow arsenic sulfide. That's what mm. I'm. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Can we dump them down the body chute? <laughs> yes, you can. Okay, that's my next plan. Yeah, yeah, they got these stained yellow robes, tattered yellow veils kind of covering their face, the same sort of marking on their forehead. So, is similar to Prey's shields, you know that they're part of Apostles and Orpiment, but maybe they fell victim to this haunt. Maybe one of them was slammed up and down, and the other one was slammed up and then came down and got impaled on the elk's head. Oh, man. Oh, that was good aim by the haunt. Yeah. James. <laughs> really is, landed that blow. Is yes. Orpiment somehow similar to these in color or in makeup to the substance outside? The sulfurous rain and mist? Only in so far as there's both some yellow going on. So maybe. I'm on to something. Yes. <laughs> Good thing you're an it. investigator. Not sure what. Yes. <laughs> uh, James, go ahead and roll a perception. Okay. Four. <laughs> I really wanted to find something out. Just on our road. <laughs> um, you see uh, that the body Stark. is wearing a tuxedo. I don't know. Oh man! For no, you're you're like searching through. You you oh. can't you can't quite see from where you're looking. You're like there might be something on them, but we'd have to pull the body down. It's incredibly intriguing. This body seems to be wearing a tuxedo. A tuxedo, you say? Yes, I haven't seen anything like it in this place. This must be a clue that we should follow closely. Is it a one-button dinner jacket or two? I feel like if we focus all of our energy... <laughs> what did you say? I'm sorry. One-button jacket or two? Oh, it's a one-button jacket, of course. Of course. All right. Of course. I think we devote all of our resources bow to tie following... Bow-tie or necktie? <laughs> it appears to be a bow-tie. A little bit old school, but it's still fine. It's acceptable. How many buttons are on the jacket, though? I said that... (laughs) (laughs) Is the bow tie a clip-on or a true tie? It is a... (laughs) fucking clip-on. Perish the thought. Sorry, I almost vomited right in my mouth. This, this tuxedo is, no doubt, uh, a clue of what is going on in this asylum. <laughs> I feel like we should delve greatly into this specific mystery. Yes. And only devote all of our resources to this for Direct. the next several hours. I'm sorry, is the, is the tuxedo navy blue or black? It's black. I'm as, sorry. As James is talking about this tuxedo, <laughs> all of you see that he's just wearing yellow stained robes. <laughs> But James's four perception. Well, in maybe, that light, it looks like a tuxedo with a clip-on bow tie. Maybe with his rat folk vision, he can see something we're missing. Perhaps, Matthew. Perhaps. <laughs> is it a cummerbund or suspenders? Mrs. O'Lady, that is precisely what is happening. Uh, I'm seeing something you're not because I am gifted and you are not. Is he wearing spats on his socks? There seem yes. There seem to be some sort of function here, a high-level noble function, it must have been. This is this tuxedo, it's the style of, of Galt. There is, I'm telling you, there are great secrets here. No, stop pulling me away, no. <laughs> they sent the wrong group of people to do this, for sure. Eventually, you pull the body down from the elk's head. Oh, oh. Shit, you're right, there's no tuxedo. (laughs) I'm sorry, I don't know what I saw. Must have been in the shadow. The way the the elk's head (laughs) sort of cast a shadow, it certainly looked like a tuxedo to the uninitiated. It was the pleads. Yes, it was the That's right. (laughs) Come to find out it was just a urine-stained robe. Yeah, uh, forgive me, uh, there was no function here. No. But he does have a masterwork silver dagger on oh. him. Ooh. Oh, yes. And uh, we'll just tell you an amulet of natural armor plus one. Oh, oh. oh nice. In fact, and I, I, I would miss this because I was lost, uh, the other guy had the same thing. So you have two amulets of natural armor plus one, two masterwork silver daggers, and two 
potions of cure light wounds. Oh, oh that is awesome. Wow. And we'll see you in Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope that I'll start the music. <laughs> I really didn't think that through. Uh, you guys see out the picture. Go ahead and roll a, every roll a perception. You've been doing so well at these. Ooh. 20. 26. <laughs> Three. You're so shitty. I'm just slowly going down. You're so shitty at this. One by one by one, I'm going down. Multiple die. Multi- God damn it. Skid, what's your roll? Uh, 20. 20, also. all right. So oh, everybody 20. except. I rolled 20. <laughs> everybody except whatever character Joe plays. You see uh, outside the, the, uh, the windows to the east. You know the windows to the west lead to the front building. That's what Mrs. O'Lady was considering jumping through during the hungry flesh fight. But since she weighs 65 pounds, thought against it. <laughs> there are windows, though, I looking, can dream. looking to the east. And you can see the mist is its outside. The mist is a little thinner here, and you see a, a garden path <gasps> just sort of leading. Oh, how nice. Like splitting through the mist. What? Sorry. You also have about 90 other doors in the central emissions area. The door in this room leads outside to a thinly misted garden path. It's very interesting, but I feel that first, the three of you must figure out who gets the other amulet of natural armor plus one. <laughs> As he slowly dons one of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, they fair dinkum, mate. <laughs> He's losing his mind again. <laughs> Take him out. Uh, should we roll off? Roll off? This? Roll off. Two highest? The yeah, two highest or two, two highest, yeah. Well, let's roll off for one and then roll off again for yeah, the other roll, one. Yeah, yeah. But then you're not involved in the roll off. <laughs> what? What? Everybody roll off. Right. Everybody roll off. 12. 14. 3? 3. 11! 14. 14. No, he got 14. All right, saying. so Matthew, you get one. Excellent. Yeah. All right, we are doing two rolls. Okay, good. All right. There you go, Mrs. O'Lady. Uh, and let's roll for the other one. Come on, James. Matthew, you can't roll for this one. We need this. You sure? Skid, what'd you get? Uh, six. Six. Grant? Ten. <gasps> I am literally, with no exaggeration, slowly going down. It's a two. <laughs> yeah! Ten wins! You know what, Joe? It never gets old. I'm going to have to force some random skill check that'll be a natural one before we combat starts. <laughs> God. Uh, all right, so thankfully, the frontline fighters of the party, best friend <laughs> and Mrs. O'Lady... I actually am. Best friend is the closest <laughs> thing we have to this. Get, yeah. <laughs> get their armor of, amulet of natural armor plus one. Guys, you got a lot of options here. Does, I'm going to take a silver dagger. Does, yeah, right. there's two masterwork silver daggers. Is it okay if I take the other? Sure. Okay. Two potions of cure light. What do you want to do? Again, one door leading out outside to a thinly misted garden path, and then if you go back to the admissions area, I mean, you had uh, a set of double doors going to the north, you had two doors in all the- right, All right, all right, we got it. <laughs> Mrs. I, O'Lady. Sorry, oh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, Sheila is going to go up to the window and look out and see if it's still raining like hot, boiling rain, or if it's as dry as a dead dingo's donga. Now, I have, I have no way of knowing if these are actually real or if he's just fucking with me. But you could be saying horrible things. I know, I know. I it would be very Australian of him just to be fucking with you, right? Yeah. This would not be beyond Todd one out at all. No. To do something like that. But uh, the question stands. Is uh, it as dry as a dead dingo's donga? So what are you trying to... You're doing a perception to see if there's any sort of uh, if, precipitation or... Yeah, if, it'd be like, if, if I think it would be dangerous to walk around even with the clear path through the garden... Uh, and that is 16. 16. You don't hear any rain. In the distance you hear peals of thunder, but it seems far away, like maybe a storm might be coming. You don't hear any precipitation. And if you look out the window, 
Though it is thinly misted, you don't see anything at the moment. I don't know, it looks safe. It looks safe as houses out there. It has never worked out built for us when we go outside. No, but maybe we got all of the bad attempts out of the way, and now we are golden. An optimist. Yeah. I like you. I like you. I like I you. I mean, not as much as my best friend, but you're pretty good. I mean, you're pretty, uh, you're apples. <laughs> I take that as a compliment. I believe it is. I, <laughs> I, I still worry that the apostles of Orbit and Ulver Zandalus himself might entreat themselves to the north inside rather than to the east through this passageway. Should we investigate inside first or perhaps outside if no, you No, that's a fair... Uh, no, yeah, that's a good idea. Idea. I, 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 yeah. Thank you. So back up into the, uh, the lobby and through a different door? Uh, yeah, I would love... So, yeah, there's all these doors. Uh... Let's go, I would like to check out the closest one, uh, outside the double doors. Uh, there's one in the hallway outside. I would like to check that out. You see the, to the east, more rubble choked, uh, like a rubble choked wall, like maybe a wall collapsed there, or uh, there's a staircase that leads up, but you can see like after the first floor, it looks like you can't get up farther, like the ceiling collapsed there. Um, there are two doors to the far north, but Sheila points out this door right here to the north. Can I check it for traps? You sure can, buddy. Natural one. It is heavily trapped. <laughs> Back off. Uh, yeah, no, uh, you're not, you don't feel confident, certainly, while checking it. You're like, I don't know why it would be trapped, but there's a lot of strange shit going on here. Is so. it locked? doesn't appear to be locked. Can I listen at the door? Yeah. Natural six. Fourteen. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Matthew. You listen and you, you don't hear anything. So you're not confident that it isn't trapped and you don't hear anything inside. I'm not very confident. You go first. <laughs> I, uh, I'll try to open the door. No, you'll, no, you're golden. You've got the, uh, you've got the protection of the amulet. You'll yes. be fine. <laughs> I hope that whatever dangers are behind this door are natural, because that's how I understand natural amulets to work. Calm yourself down. Open the door. Uh, I don't know why I rolled a die. I just tried to open the door. <laughs> just open the door. Grant, can you roll the open door check? Yes. He did uh, roll a 17 on the die. It was a great Ooh. roll. He opened the shit out of that door. Yeah. yeah. He fucking crushed the, that door open. The AC on that doorknob was 16. Oh, oh man. Oh, wow. Oh. You open it. Who's your best friend now, motherfucker? <laughs> it's me. You, you open the door after... Uh, talking about it for 45 minutes <laughs> and see that the room is partially collapsed and the collapse appears to have destroyed uh, most of the buckets and mops and feather dusters that were stored in here. Uh, however, the wall has collapsed so much so that there's a portion of the western wall that's fallen away that opens into another room. We gotta climb through this wall. Y'all ready? Did you recast well, your actor? I feel so confident after rolling a 17 on that open door check. It's like James arms a spell. He's like, what has happened to him? <laughs> Who are over. you? Summon Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> it was more of an iced tea thing, but anyway. Um, all right, so best friend uh, will say, there, there's an open passageway here. Shall, shall we proceed? Yes, go. All right, best Could friend we? will continue. And walk straight through this new open passageway. Heedlessly. This is a pretty fucked up room. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm gonna tell you right now, Grant. <laughs> it looks truly terrifying. You see on the opposite side of the room, the door is barricaded. Like, so that if you tried to get in from the admissions area, you wouldn't be able to, but because you're entering from this supply closet, you can see that the door is barricaded from oh, the inside. God. 
Uh, to the people, oh God. A long desk, several chairs, a sideboard, and numerous once stately landscape paintings barricade the door of this somber looking, perhaps conference room. Maybe this is a place where they brought new patients or brought the new patients families to discuss about committing them. Obviously you walk through this toppled wall and see bodies littering the ground. And if a pile of bodies wasn't strange enough, all of them appear to be wearing masks. What? Masks is a what? Best friend will kneel down and, and pull one of the masks away to inspect it further to answer Mrs. O Lady's question. So you walk in, it looks like maybe half a dozen body, bodies, and you can tell that whatever happened here, they were absolutely slaughtered. Ugh. You've seen bodies beaten to death now or slammed up and down, but whatever happened in here was a straight up slaughter. You take off, it looks like some of the bodies, their faces are wrapped in sheets, shirts, or like grain bags cinched around their head. Uh, so you um, reach down at the nearest one that has one of these grain bags and you uncinch it and you pull it off and you just see a face that has been completely mauled to death. And looking at the mask, is there anything else I learned? Is there a check I can do it on? Maybe a religion or... No, but you can just tell that like there's something ritualistic about it. Maybe not in the killing so much as in the calling card left behind. We found the kinkiest sex party in town and we're late. Oh, no, no. Damn it! <laughs> no, the password was Fidelio. Oh, you fools. Can I do a heel check? Like on their faces to see how, like if they're pummeled or cut up or yeah, yeah, eaten yeah. or whatever. Ooh, natural 20, 24. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. That's an exceptionally good roll, he said while stalling. <laughs> I mean, of all the rolls that you've rolled tonight. I think it was a pretty good roll. Joe, what do you think of that roll? Uh, I'm very jealous. And I no longer like Skid as a person. Well, I don't think, I don't think we have to go, go that far. It was just a good roll. It's no reason to hate someone. <laughs> it looks like... I mean, you can tell, you're no psychic investigator, but you can tell that like the people in here, it seems like they barricaded themselves in. Mm -hmm. You see the barricade is still intact. You look behind you and see that the wall collapsed here. So whoever killed these people came in through the same way that you're killing, coming in. It's pretty obvious as you start to piece it together. You look at just the face with a heel check and you can see that they were just beaten to death with a blunt instrument, various oh. blunt Does it look, does it look like, they were, like they crashed through this wall here, through the janitor's closet to come into the room? It, does doesn't, it doesn't appear that way. And you know from look, you've been in the asylum now for a few days, like lots of the walls have crumbled from something that shook the very foundation of this mm. building. Um, but there was a wall here and now it's gone. There was a wall here and now it's gone. And so that, these people came in here, barricaded themselves in, and then someone used the opportunity of the collapsed wall to come in and beat them to death or something. With multiple blunt instruments though, so it, it leads reason to believe that there were multiple people beating them to death about the face. Or someone with lots of arms. Yep. A skittermander did it. Tumsy. Oh man. It's possible. It's highly possible, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, if, could I uh, get to the drawers of the desk? Yeah. Could I search the drawers of the desk? Yeah. I do so. There's nothing in them. Any of the other furniture have stuff in it? Um, Secret compartments? Roll me a perception check. 14. 14. Uh, you're looking around and you see that it looks like the, the bodies are uh, mostly wearing uh, the outfits of, a, of an orderly that works at the asylum. And one of them is wearing a suit of padded armor, which I can't imagine is better than any of the armor that you're wearing, uh, and had a sap on his belt, like he was like ready to defend himself yeah. with a sap. Uh, and you also find, while looking through the other shit, uh, two thunderstones. Oh. Ooh. oh, okay. And a golden ring. Oh. 
Uh, James would like to detect magic just on the room while he's in the back there. Nothing. Uh, well, uh, you detect a lot of magic from Mrs. O'Lady. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's a kind of a, he's washing 60 feet of detect magic, so it's well beyond this room. Right, right. Uh, is he picking up anything within 60 feet? You know, that's a fair question. The ring? What are you doing? Certainly nothing on the ring. No, no, you're really not. You're okay. really not. Can I see the ring? Abs- it? Absolutely. Jay. I tried. Lend me the ring. <laughs> if you would but lend me, <laughs> I would drive the hosts of Mordor's list face to face with Sauron himself. And they tell us to give it away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we need a good skid soliloquy. Yeah. Cut it! Answer me. None of them can! I take the ring. <laughs> you take the ring. Uh, you want to roll a praise? I do. Uh, 15. I will appraise you like I should. It's, uh, it's worth 150 gold pieces. Oh. 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 You should go back to the chapel and try and sell it. At the, oh, yeah. At the ring store. Yeah. Trade it for precious wood. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, you've, you've scoured this room. You feel pretty confident that, uh, you know, you haven't, you, you've found everything of worth in here. But again, just, you, you can't help but wonder, like, these poor orderlies, if that's who they were, they were so close to getting to the chapel. Did they run in here when the shit went down and didn't have a chance to get to the chapel? Did they try to get to the chapel, but that strange wall had already blocked the passageway? You don't know, but yet again, it's more evidence of innocence just being murdered. But by what or by who? Maybe maybe the apostles and Orpiman. Maybe doppelgangers and other strange creatures. You don't know. Uh, is there any, can I tell if the masks were placed on them before or after they were beaten to death? Rolling over your uh, heel check, it's pos- posthumously. Okay. Oh. Mm. Mm. Weird. No. Yeah. So they were killed, and then their faces were cut. That is really weird. So Who would do creepy. something like that? No. Xandalusis. Xandalusis. He does. Prize, prize. Three shields, words fail. Um... um Shall we move on from there? Uh, yes. There's nothing left here. I don't like this room. I don't care for it. Uh, there's no evidence of any... I'm sorry if this was already asked, but there's no evidence of any names on anybody's uh, clothing or, or uh, identifying... No, no, like no. name tags. No. Name tags. <laughs> no. Sewn into their white... Okay. It's nothing. Um, let's find another door. Did we, did we try these double doors? No. I think we went straight outside. So um, we did. Do we want to like swing around like the right hand side here to check out this hallway or do we want to go right for the middle doors? I'm tempted to see what's in this room. Good. Yeah, I, yeah, I go for that. So you can go, uh, looking at the map here, you can go to the west and up or to the east to one of those two doors where it looks like you are going. Looks like we're going east. <clears throat> uh, I will open this door. You will just open it. Heedlessly. Heedlessly. Recklessly. Nice. Yes. With abandon. Thank you. I kick it in. Ta. Ta. <laughs> Roll a d20 to open the door. <laughs> you open the door, and it opens to the outside. Oh. Oh. What? Oh, wow. Wow. Looks like... <gasps> A courtyard. Oh. Oh. Not unlike the first courtyard you found in Los Angeles. I close the door. (laughs) Is it raining? Is it raining? It doesn't appear to be raining. Again, Mm. you hear the cracks of thunder in the distance. I close the door. That's the sound. Continuing with our (laughs) continuing... Continuing with our mission to explore the inside before the outside. Okay. You open the door to the right, to yep. the east. Just heedlessly open, yes? Heedlessly, heedlessly, recklessly. Looks like a passageway leading further east. You can see a little bit around the corner, and it looks like more choked rubble. Shall we? Oh, wow. What? Huh? 
Somebody did something with the walls in here. So all that rubble is impassable here. Okay. Oh, okay. But down the end of the further eastmost point, could we maybe see more if we approach cautiously? Sure could. Just as best friend has done. (laughs) Or you could just run. Run in. (laughs) Get out of the way, you old lady. (laughs) I'm sick of your shit. Get out of my way. It's like running down the hall like wild. I've been off my meds for three weeks. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we don't know why he's in here. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm using that aura of yellow around you is the light that you've cast on yourself. So that's mm-hmm. as far as you see. Looks like a hallway, again, five foot wide, leading to the north. Our best friend's going to listen down the hallway uh, and is not going to hear shit with a 10, so he'll stealthily move it's forward. Very, very quiet. With a negative six to his stealth. Good. Go ahead and roll that stealth check. Okay, let's see what happens. <laughs> Come on, negative numbers. Yes, negative four. <laughs> This is like when Coca-Cola introduced New Coke, (laughs) and it sucked. You're like, guys, stand back. I've (laughs) got this. New Coke is coming back, by the way. Uh, Really? A nuclear test is like a minus two. (laughs) So you you continue looking up towards the north, and you see yet again a hallway that has, it just ends in rubble. More of the ceiling has collapsed, and it looks impassable. And he gets claustrophobic in this hallway, best friend does. Says, Listen, I, I, I know we're supposed to explore inside before we go outside, but this courtyard is clearly in the middle of this place, whatever it is. This no, is calm asylum. Down, calm down. But we, we found another room when I went outside before. No, that's true. Are you all right, mate? Are you feeling... Sorry, I can't look at the spreadsheet. Let's just go back. <laughs> that spreadsheet, by the way, is titled How to Talk Strayan. It is. How to Speak Strayan. Uh, how to Speak Strayan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Double doors? What are you, piss week? <laughs> yeah, and le- if we, uh, if the double doors don't open, let's uh, go outside. I- I'll- I'm happy to go. Yeah, let's check. I'm, I'm down. I'll check, this. I'll check these doors for traps. I have a quick question. Is anybody here tonight from Australia? Yeah. Hey. Are these legit? Are they? Somewhat, yes. So, okay. So far, yes. Right. So far, yes. <laughs> we'll take. Oh, so far, yes. Okay. All right. We'll take them. Well, but somewhat. Thank you, Todd. One out. This voice coming so much, at us from you. the darkness could also be trying to fuck with us. That's true. That's true. They could be in it together. It's it could be a conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. They are a notoriously corrupt race, the Australians. <laughs> I, can, I can understand. I can totally envision two of them conspiring to destroy me. <laughs> the famous cult of Australians. <laughs> Blindly follow each other. It only takes two. Conspiracy, that's only two people. Only that's two like people conspiracy. in a room. Uh, oh, lady, you want to check for traps on this door? Yeah, 29. 29. It appears to be untrapped and unlocked. I open the doors. You open the door into darkness. Oh, wow, yeah. The darkness of a very large room. However, um, the light shining off of uh, Best Friends, what'd you put that on? Shield. Your, on your shield. Prey shields. Prey shields. Is enough to see something that both James and Mrs. O'Lady feel all of a sudden like a weight sinking in their stomach. Mm. It looks like an enormous library. <gasps> oh. I'm very excited. Are you kidding? Yeah. You mean that sinking feeling of awesomeness? <laughs> well, since you've come here, you both have, or, or certainly Mrs. O'Lady has had this, these reveries of being in a library, both as an adult and as a little girl. James has seen visions of libraries it's as true. well. It's true. And does this library look exceptionally familiar? It doesn't look obse- ex- ex- exceptionally familiar. <laughs> Because the ones in your dreams were either they went on forever yeah. or they were like in the middle of a street. It's a library in the asylum. Mrs. O'Lady has a methodical mind and is an investigator and fucking loves a library. Murder, she read. <laughs> Murder, she read. <laughs> that was good, Grant. <laughs> You see sagging shelves held together by dust, an extensive system of rolling ladders ringing the front part of the library. You would assume it continues to the back. 
husky, dull-looking tomes going from floor to ceiling. A worn table in the middle, surrounded by uncomfortable-looking chairs. You can see up, those of you with dark vision or some semblance of dark vision, low-light vision, you see a chandelier of iron vines dangling high up above. You open the door and the scents of leather and old paper pervade your nostrils. But so does a distinct bestial musk. Oh, no. Oh, oh, that's like Grant. <laughs> 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 Smells exactly like a burger. There's a shower backstage, Grant. <laughs> I make no apologies for my musk, for it is eau de burger. Eau de burger. <laughs> and it eau makes everyone burger. say, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Dynamite. Dynamite. Speaking of your musk, I forgot that you're sick what? from the hungry flesh. I had Paula Dean was who it was, yes. by the way. <laughs> Paula Dean has infected you. <laughs> you have the curse of the Dean. I forgot about this because I was so busy making fun of you guys, but whatever this thing did to you, it has done damage to both your con and your charisma. Oh, no. Since I just remembered it, why don't we just roll it out right now, Grant? Because the worst case scenario is you permanently die. The best case scenario is... You permanently, you permanently die. die. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, I, think, I think we did do this. Did we? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. you took a point of con and charisma already. And then yeah, you I have ability you score boils. damage They're one. Boils. Oh, oh, ability te score oh, damage teacher, one. Teacher? Yeah. yeah. I did my homework already. Did he cure, though? Did he save? The, yeah. No, I took the point of each. Because you need two consecutive You work full-time on this podcast, right? I got a lot going <laughs> on. I just want to know if you, do you have other bear. jobs you're doing. Don't poke do you the have bear. other jobs you're doing? Just curious. Roll another fortitude save. <laughs> Go the to The DC hell. just went up, Grant. Yeah, the DC just went up. <laughs> the longer you take, the higher it goes. Just roll a fortitude. All right. Side. You'll be fine. You'll All be right. fine. Uh, 13. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, no, that's going to be two points of con damage, one oh point my God. of charisma damage. Ooh. All of a sudden, he seems to be slumping. So I'm now down two points of charisma and uh, three points of con. Ooh. Now, can anyone do anything to help him? Because I'm going to just resolve this. If you can't, um, I, I mean, can I do a can a heal check work to like treat disease? No, it's some sort of disease. You would need a like remove disease. You need spell. to remove disease. Yeah, no one has I, that. I don't have that. Or a potion of remove disease. We, we could ask Winter if she has it in her supplies. But I can offer encouraging words. Yeah. What do you say? I say, listen, young man. You are big and strong. You have no reason to fear. This disease probably comes from another dimension and will probably kill you very quickly. So you are going to be just A-OK. -okay. Well, hold fast to what you believe in. If you're the vision of future of what aging brings, I'm so glad I'm dying early. Wow. <laughs> you old jerk. That's the reduced charisma. Yeah. That's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Millennials. Grant, this is what I'm going to do because I, you know, I, I forgot it. Like, I forget most shit. But uh, I'm going to have you roll one more time. All right. See what happens. Ooh. Ooh. Is treat disease a medicine check? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right, so try that. Yeah. All right, I also have medicine. A natural 20. Okay. Okay. So he gets what, a plus five? Plus four. Plus four to your save. So I would have saved yeah. the first time if we had been as smart as the people in the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> they grow geniuses in Seattle. <laughs> Natural, Natural fucking twenty. <laughs> That's we both got one. Twenty right. bros. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that alone for now. Uh, I'm gonna say you don't take any further damage for the time being. What do you wanna do in this room? 
I would like, um, so can we, I mean, ultimately, I want to spend a lot of time reading what's left of the books here. Yeah, so does but, anyone want to walk into the actual room hold first? Hold on, hold on. I have, I have, yeah. <laughs> yes, Mr. Lady, you first. You're just um, standing there at the door like, I would love to spend a lot of time here and read. But let's first make sure nothing's, that musk is not going to oh, kill right. us. Oh, right, the musk. So can we cautiously proceed can we, to the room? Perhaps, hey, come close, come closer. Perhaps we could, if it's around one of these corners, perhaps we could draw it out, if we are ready for it. All right. Make our presence known, and make it come to us. I do have this thunderstone. Ooh, could use that. I thought more along the lines of a ghostly sound, something to make it think we're already in the room. It exposes itself, we prepare our actions and attack it. I like that plan as well. Your thoughts, Sheila? I think the Thunderstone idea is bleeding bonza. This <laughs> is getting much more immersive. Yeah. So just to be clear, do you like that plan or not? Oh, right, yes, I like okay. the idea. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, know, I realize you don't all have the spreadsheet. Can I do a survival check to look for tracks? Yeah. Natural one. Uh, and the Thunderstone, it, uh, it, it deafens people, right? Deafens creatures? Uh-huh. Okay. Can I roll a knowledge check to identify the smell? Uh, yeah, you can try. Knowledge nature. I don't have that. I do. I do. Uh, how's a 28 grab you? Ooh! Natural 20 for James and his rat scent. Yeah. He could probably smell if it was to the left or to the right with that, I would think. You uh, stick your pointy, stinky little nose in there. And it smells like you. What? Oh. oh no. Some sort of filthy, disgusting rat. <laughs> <laughs> they disgust me, you know. This is my great curse. Perhaps it's a dire rat. Could be quite deadly. Or more than one. More than just one. I will do a, a survival check as well to see if there's tracks. Let me ask you a good question. Uh, you can keep that roll that you just rolled. Uh, but can, <laughs> what roll? Can anyone see farther than best friend in the dark? Because I can reveal more. I cannot. No. Jamesy? I'll, I'll step up there. Best friend, you want to step out of the way for a second and sure. let James get up there? All right, Absolutely. I can see 60 feet in the dark. Give me a little... Uh... I mean, there's a wall there, so... Oh, unless... These yeah. are shelves, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess it would just be a little bit longer. That's as far as you can see? Yeah. Thrilling. Uh, so yeah, so you see, you see more tables. The room looks like it just continues onward. Right. Um, okay. James is then going to... Give, let me give this a chance. He's going to step in, and uh, he will use uh, his scent ability. Okay. Uh, just to see if the opponent is within 30 feet. He can sense if it's within 30 feet. Uh, yeah, I can detect opponents within 30 feet by smell. Okay. Uh, if I believe they're within 30 feet, then I can roll survival check to determine their direction. Within 30 feet? Yeah. Okay. I think it's pretty obvious it's not, but... You don't, you don't detect it. Yeah. yeah. Um, the ceilings look to be about 14 feet high in this room. Uh, I think there were 20 feet high in admissions, which was higher than most of the rooms you've been in. You look here, and it looks like the ceiling has a little bit of a drop. You see these ladders on tracks that can be pushed around, you'd think. Um, the tracks end at certain areas uh, that you could climb to the top of the shelves. But uh, Is there yeah. a ladder nearby? Uh, yeah, there's one uh, to your left, about 15 feet in, uh, and one to your right about 25 feet in, so one there and one, mm. yeah. And they're on wheels? Yeah, they're on wheels. Like in, okay. Yeah. Hmm. What do you want to do, thunderstone tactic or the ghost sound tactic? Yeah, I like the ghost sound tactic first, just to see if we can get it to move. Why don't we slide one of the, the, the stairs on the wheels all the way down and see if it knocks into anything? Because we'd have to go too far into the room to get to it. Oh. Just everybody come into the room, just okay. a couple feet, and then okay. uh, James is going to cast Ghost Sound around the corner to my left, over here, uh, and, and just cast the sound, basically, of us talking. 
like, you know, just basically being like, oh, we finally found it, the library. All of our secrets will be answered. <laughs> oh, I hope there aren't any rats in here. Yeah. Where do, do you, you cast that? To know where you cast that safe environment. in the darkness towards the back of the room or where? Yeah, I don't know if I have to have line of sight to where I cast it. But yeah, I'm trying to cast on the other side of this. All right, so show me the, the farthest distance that you can see. All these tables in front of you, you can see right over them. Oh, so, oh they're oh. tables. I'm oh. sorry, I thought these were bookshelves. Now they're tables. Uh, okay. That is a big table. Yeah, then I can see. <laughs> that is a massive it's table. so wide. This is how far I can see, right? Oh, I see. Oh, I know what you're talking about. No, what's in front of you is a shelf. The table is in the middle, and then another shelf. So and we can't the see around the shelf, shelf right? Yeah, no, no. So you can see. Yeah, if you step to the left, you can see further. It's very dark. It's very dark. <laughs> All right, then you know what? Screw I'm it. sorry, I see what you're saying. Yeah, uh, uh, best friend and James, I guess, will stealth around the corner. Okay. And I'm just going to try to take a peek long ways and see 60 feet deep into this room. Okay, so now you see that. You see okay. much deeper into the room. You see where it ends, which is nice. Yes. Uh, and you see that an- there's another shelf sort of bookending this table in the middle of the room. <laughs> like that? <laughs> the shelves are eight feet high. And the ceiling's 14 feet. There are no ladders leading to the top of the shelves in front of you. Okay, so right in that square where you see there, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to cast the uh, ghost sound. Okay, you cast ghost sound. And what is the sound? Give me an idea what that sounds like. It's us talking. But I want to hear it. Hello. We finally found the library. Yes, all of our our questions will be answered. Do you prefer tuxedo shoes, the shiny kind, or just plain regular black shoes with your tuxedos? Patent leather, I believe you mean. Patent, patent leather, leather. I, yes. think, I prefer I the think, patent I leather myself. All right, so you talk. <laughs> <laughs> it is obvious by our chatter that we have no fear of any danger. Right. In this room. And you just see a book come flying into that space. That's no Where did the book come from? Book came from the darkness to the right, so beyond best friend's vision. Mm. Best friend, stay there. It hits the floor, and then nothing else happens. Don't move. James, quickly, we'll cross to the other side of the room. Sneak around just past best friend and try to look 60 feet deep. See if he sees anything. You look deep, and you see a mirror image of the... uh, the side that you've already seen. Oh, God. No creatures. It's got the jump on us. It cast mirror image. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Um, So I can, if we want to throw a thunderstone, it will deafen whatever, you know, if they they fail their save, it will deafen. Give it a shot, Mrs. Air Lady. Do it. Does anyone have any, a better throwing ability than I do? Well, it is a bit more speciality. That's what I was, that's what I was thinking. Hand it over. She hands over a thunderstone. And he's like, um, I don't know. I don't have this spreadsheet up. He throws it. Where do you throw it? Natural one. Yeah. Oh. Why don't we go to a fan fumble? Okay. Because well, I know you had that all pulled up, O'Brien. This was a thunderstone thrown in the direction of, like, deeper into the room? Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, it's, a ranged, it's a ranged attack. This yeah. one from Ben in Ramsey, New Jersey. Ben, you here? <laughs> no. Uh, God. It's called Call to the Spirits. With a shot that could save not only your life, but all of your friends, you pray to the spirits around you for luck. And the personification of Joe O'Brien's luck answers. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's going to throw, Joe's going to throw. <laughs> you have minus two to attack, damage, and saving throws for 1d3 rounds. Oh, man. Woo. That is a bad thing to have because all of a sudden... Oh, no. Books start flying off the shelves oh, no. at all of you, and you hear... As swarms of rats start oh, running. Oh, out. not no. swarms. Why don't we roll for initiative? Oh, oh no! no with the Let's roll, Rick a roll. Oh, man. Roll, Rick a roll, Rick a roll, Rick a roll. This is bad business. James, what do you got? 20. 20, okay. Uh, Flat 20. Nat 20? Flat 20. Flat 20. Or, I mean, after, you know, just. Uh, Sheila? Uh, 24. 24 for Sheila. Very good. Mrs. O'Lady? 10. 10, not great. 
Best friend. A goddamn seven. Oh, that's just terrible. Uh, Sheila, you go to throw this thing, and I don't know, it like, it just... It, it should, will still explode, I guess. It, it explodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe everybody should roll a fortitude save against the Thunderstone that fell directly at your feet. Why don't we start there? Oh, my God, dude. He it's threw within, it. The natural one rule it is it goes in that area. It has a 10-foot radius wherever it lands. Yeah, yeah. So everybody roll a fortitude save. <laughs> Bad business. Bad business, LaValle. Um, <laughs> DC 15, come on. God. Nope. Nine. Uh, Skidamariki do? Uh, that's 24. 24, you're fine. 15. 15, so James, the spellcaster. <laughs> And best friend are deafened for, don't worry about it, one hour. <laughs> Sheila, you hear, you see books flying down off the shelves coming near your feet, some nowhere's near you. It's your action, what do you do? What? Sheila. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Were you playing Tetris? <laughs> yeah, I am. Total War of Warhammer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna. Sheila is going to. It says, oh, "I won't let the ghost of Joe Brian deter me." And he jumps up on the table, uh, and I guess he probably can't see anything that's, still. That's a bookshelf. Oh, that's a bookshelf. Sorry. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. That's a bookshelf. It's a DC okay. 20 acrobatics check. Okay. <laughs> to get to the uh, middle of the shelf. All right. So, so I will. It, Never mind. So he goes. Uh, I can't. I can't even see because there's no. I can't even see. Yeah. Well, you know, best friend is providing you with enough light to be able to at least see in that yellow circle. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So Sheila is going to swing around the right side of the bookshelf, and he is going to prepare to throw a bomb. He's going to. If he sees a rat, he's going to throw a bomb at it. Sees rat, going to throw a bomb. Yeah. I like it. James. Uh, well, not James. I mean, uh, right. You uh, see James. A rat he doesn't know. Right. <laughs> Already, he's going to throw a bomb. James, you're deaf. What do you do? Oh, God. <laughs> Level two deaf and wizard. Uh, fighting swarms. It's, it's uh, so perfect. Um, uh, yeah. Roll a perception check, James. Natural one. Uh, I tried. It's all falling apart. I tried to help you. Uh, all right, James is going to uh, cast 30 feet out in front of him uh, a silent image of himself in the middle of the room, okay. ready to fight. And that doesn't have any somatic components, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sure it does. Okay. Um, somatic's okay, I think it's verbal. It's a verbal, right. yeah. Oh, so verbal, it's, it does have me, verbal, yes. yeah. Um, so, was 50 or 20%? 20%. 20%, 53. All right, you're good. So, so you gets, cast a silent image of yourself where? Uh, 30 feet straight up in the room. Okay. So if you just want to duplicate my piece. I, can I like that. Like red schma? Yeah. Okay. Boom. Schma. 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 See? Ah. Swim, swim, swim. All right. Anyone with dark vision, which is just James? Is it just James? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. You see a couple things. One, you see there's some sort of rat-esque creature on top of the shelves here. Oh, no. And it throws a book at the silent image. Ah, OK. It just throws a book down at the silent image. And I mean, do I roll the hit? Yeah. Uh, it actually misses the silent image. Perfect. Wow. So it goes careening off the bookshelf uh, to in the far end of the room here and just. Dun, 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 dun. Then you also see a swarm of rats come running up straight through your silent image. Oh. And Sheila, you can attack now. Okay. All right. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. They don't what? stop on the silent image? No, they run right through you. Cool. <laughs> All right, so I have minus one to attack. They have scent. They know that you're not real. Uh, that is a 10 to hit. 10 to hit the- Touch attack. Uh, touch attack. Yeah. You, you threw a bomb? Yeah. 
That's a hit. Okay. Uh, all right. So that is minus one damage. Oh, that is that is ten points of da- fire damage. Ten points of fire damage yeah. to the rat swarm. Yes. Uh, Beautiful. That's, that's fantastic. I know. Um, this is my bread and butter. Swarms, man. Alchemist. <laughs> fire bombs. Get out of my way. Uh, it, it, it devastates the swarm, but it doesn't kill it. Okay. It's uh, not devastate. really my definition of devastation. <laughs> <laughs> you see more of these creatures, uh, James, appearing atop the shelves. And uh, at least for right now, they're just throwing books. One throws a book at Mrs. O'Lady, but Mrs. O'Lady, you're kind of tucked in there behind the corner, so it's going to be a tough, a tough toss. Uh, misses Mrs. O'Lady, uh, and then the other one uh, just winks. I don't even know. No, you know what? No one sees this because none of you have dark vision, with the exception of James. So the other one, you don't know what it does. Moving right along, it is Mrs. O'Lady's turn. Mrs. Um, O'Lady, you saw a book just come flying past you. Yeah, but I can't see it because of where uh, where best friend is. So I'm gonna hold. Okay. I'm gonna delay and see what best friend does. Okay, right. it is best friend's turn. Best friend is going to muster up all of his courage and try to climb the nearest ladder to attack the rat that he heard from James is throwing books down. Okay. So is there like a place around uh, here that I can climb up? Uh, the, the nearest ladder? ladder is right in front of the rat swarm. You can get to it without provoking, but don't forget once you get there, you know, it's gonna, once you start climbing, it's I'll gonna I'll double slow down. move straight up. Double move straight up? Yep. All right, that's fine. Um, so you get there and you start climbing up. I'm not going to have it provoke because it's a tiny little swarm. Boop. Uh, all right, so you start making your way up and you are now atop this thing and you see one of these creatures standing 20 feet away from you. Let me show you what this guy looks like because this is pretty accurate here. Do, do, do. Actually, what can you guys see? Yeah, we'll go down here. Do, do, do. That's what it looks like. Oh, God. Oh, oh that's awful. He's oh, like, God. Hi, Grant. Oh, God. oh, God. This is what you look like to me, Troy. That's... <laughs> like, it's pretty on point. Just put a little <laughs> put a little baseball cap on top of it, and it's <laughs> pretty on point. So cool. Uh, Mrs. O'Lady, you I saw will... what Best Friend did. What do you want to do? I will act. I will cast light on uh, my sword cane. Nice. Okay. Uh, and then I will, I will remain where I am for now. Light on the sword cane, and you remain where you are. I'll throw that light on there, but in the meantime, uh, Sheila, you moved to when that swarm attacked, right? So, yeah, it's going to be James's turn. Uh, James is just going to... Uh, he's going con- to... He's going to move uh, his illusion um, into the, the middle... Uh, no, he's going to move it deeper into the room. All right. Uh, I should say where J- where best friend has moved there, you can see a little bit more into the room. James, your illusion doesn't give you the sight past there. So uh, this is what you say. All right. So you just move him deeper into the room. Deeper into the room. Yeah, that's my action. Okay. Um, these creatures atop the bookshelves, again, the one that best friend can see, he is actually going to move towards best friend, <laughs> charge at him, oh. <laughs> and attempt to bite. Oh. Oh. Natty 19. That is going to be a 22 to hit. Oh, that'll bite deep I'm assuming that's a hit. That's only going to be one point of damage. Oh, Uh, but is there... Do I feel anything? Sickness? Uh, Fortitude save, maybe? You do feel that it sunk its teeth in so deep, even though it only did one point of damage, the blood is still squirting out of you. And you have begun bleeding. You look a bit crook, mate. Uh, what? 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 Crook. It means sick or the, broken. The one. And the that, example I'm giving is <laughs> you're looking a bit crook, mate. The only thing more frightening than these rats is the parlance of a criminal nation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know we got some. It's Australia. not. <laughs> it's not a criminal nation. It is a nation of criminals. I know. <laughs> Yeah, the nation is perfectly the legitimate. Very, don't don't badmouth the nation. You're right. It's just the people that live in it. Let's get. <laughs> uh, the one that threw a book at Mrs. O'Lady and Miss moves into a better position, so I can just like throw a book straight down on your ugly little head. What? 
Matthews, Beautiful. not Mrs. Oledes. Ah. You d- how uh, dare you bring Lynn Cohen's head into this? <laughs> 16 to hit, Mrs. O. Miss. Ooh. Well, wow. Nice. Add me a little national armor, baby. Oh, that's what's, that always saves the day. Uh, best friend, all of a sudden you see behind you, or you hear behind you, pew, as this rattling that was on the other side just pew, appears behind you. What the actual fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it just goes pew, pew, and appears it, right behind you, and it just stands there. So you are now surrounded on both sides by these horrible, me looking creatures. Well, it is Sheila's turn. All right, Sheila is going to pop another bomb off his belt, poop, uh-huh. shake it up, and throw it again at the swarm. Okay, at the swarm that I forgot to take that an action is, for. Yeah, that is another hit, even okay. with a minus one, and that is six more points of fire damage. You've taken out the swarm. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. Hey! All right! This is as effective as Andrew Bogut. Uh, all right, so that swarm is gone. And you see that as that swarm dissipates, it wasn't like a real uh, swarm of rats, but more it seemed celestial in nature, as if it was summoned. Oh, dear. Best friend, you got a rattling in front of you and a rattling behind you. What do you do? Damn, and I'm stuck in the middle with them. And Um, death. And your death. Shit. And they're both unharmed at this point, correct? As far as you know. (laughs) Fuck. Uh, best friend will charge backwards uh, at this creature. Grant. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Grant. Uh, Grant. You're a disappointment. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh God. Uh, it's really uncanny. <laughs> get, get close to Troy if you can. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna swing at this awful Troy monster. Natural fucking one. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Yes, it's because you're deaf, bro. Oh. Uh, Joe, give it to me and give it to me good. Can we pick one uh, from Seattle just in case? You got I think any that'd be uh, fun. Pacific Northwest fan fumbles? Yeah. Uh, this one's called Salmon Rain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Salmon Rain. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We have Phil from Tacoma, Washington. <laughs> hey, Phil! Yeah! Front row! We're gonna call him Front Row Phil! Front Row Phil! Front Row Phil! Front Row Phil! <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I was like, wait, are we sure we should be cheering? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, this is an all horrible thing. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. In fact, I think we <laughs> might have had it before. Uh, oh, Butterfingers. Oh, that sounds familiar. Am I Bart Simpson now? <laughs> Yeah. You lose your grip on your weapon as you attempt to attack. It flies out of your hands and lands in an adjacent square. Roll a D8 to determine where it lands. Oh my god, it could land right on Sheila's head. It could head. land straight uh, down on Sheila. Oh, Let no. me tell you what the numbers are before you roll it. We'll start uh, up and to the left is one. So one is up and to the left, two is right in front of you, and then it goes around all so the way. So I'm eight. You are eight. Okay. Please don't hurt my best friend. That's all I want. You're my best friend, mate. Three. Okay. So it flies into the courtyard. (laughs) Through the wall? (laughs) It actually, it hits the wall and just lands right in front of your feet. Oh, great. Not terrible. Not terrible. Front row Phil. All right. Let's go to front row Phil. For a relatively harmless fumble. All right. Front row Phil. Uh, Mrs. O'Lady. Mrs. O'Lady is like, how Dare you profane these instruments of knowledge? And she's gonna, well, I can do it too. And then she's gonna <laughs> a, use a, a telekinetic projectile to send one of the books directly back at the face oh, wait, of this rat wait, creature. Wait, no. oh. <laughs> Hypocrite! <laughs> <laughs> we'll, deal with, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> uh, roll to hit, buddy. Uh, Natty 18, uh, oh, 21. Yeah. That'll do. Nice. How much damage? Six points of damage. Hey! Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Front row smash. Matt. No, just, just smack him in the face with a book. Yeah. <laughs> Throw the book at him. Throw the book at him. <laughs> uh, and then I will move. Then uh, where are you going to move? Move right. 
there. Oh, okay, oh. right there, right in perfect range of this rat. And, oh no, you cast light on yourself, right? You should have an aura, maybe. Yeah, I'll throw that aura on there. James, you are up, good buddy. Uh, James is going to uh, back off of this silent image tactic for the moment. They seem to be all over us. And he's going to look up at the one that was just over Mrs. O'Lady. He's going to turn to his side, reach his uh, claw out, and do a blinding ray Ooh. on the creature and see if he can't blind it. Okay, so, uh, and this is the one, which one? Uh, the one that, Ms. yeah, right, that one. Right, yeah. okay, the one that just threw a book at Mrs. O'Lady that Mrs. O'Lady threw that book right back. Yes. <laughs> okay. You put that back according to the Dewey Decimal System where <laughs> you found right. it. <laughs> no, he shouldn't put it back himself. Leave it on the shelf so that the librarians can put it back. You're right. They hate that when the people put it back themselves. We also don't know if they use Library of Congress to sort their, their books or not. Yeah. That is so true. That is so true. Apparently it's a much more usable system. I heard that too. I read it in Vanity Fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So first I'm going to roll a uh, chance to fail. Okay. And lose it. 29. All right. Ooh. All right. So he okay. gets it off. Now, it's a, now it's a ranged uh, touch attack. Uh, 19. You yeah. got him. You got him. Uh, and the creature, if it is uh, a, uh, my HD, 2 HD or lower, it is blinded for one round. Uh, 2 HD or lower? Yeah. 2 HD or lower, you say? Yeah. What was the question again? That was 2 <laughs> HD or lower, Skip. How many? How many HD? It is not. Ah. It's higher than that? It's higher, yeah. Um, oh, great. So they're higher HD than a oh, fuck. It's uh, Dazzled. Oh, no. It's Dazzled. It's Dazzled. <laughs> Woo! Woo! What is Dazzled, Fabulous. Joe? Minus one. Minus one to attacks? Yeah. You really showed it? Oh. Uh, it is going to uh, throw a book at Mrs. Oh, hold on. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to move, move out of the room. Because it's its turn. I'm gonna move out of the room. You're leaving. Just out of the room. See you, James. You have the light. Oh, no, you don't. It's gonna throw at Mrs. O'Lady at a minus one because it was just blown away by your flourish. Uh, shit, that's a, that's a straight up miss. There you go. It was so dazzled. There you go, old lady. They can Stop do anything. Stop throwing books. All right, now the other one, uh, the other ones that are dealing with best friend will flank best friend. Spoiler alert, they get sneak attack damage. So that one comes up and goes to bite best friend who is now flanked by two of these rats. Oh. Fucking miss with a bite. Yeah. How do you miss with a bite? Yeah, baby. The other one will try to bite, and I rolled another four. So. Yes, yeah, Seattle. Bite, Thank bite. Thank you. Send me that front row fill energy. <laughs> what absolute garbage. I, you guys know that you're getting a, a huge chance here. Please take advantage of it. It is Sheila's turn. <coughs> uh, Sheila is a stay away from our best friend whose name happens to be <coughs> Best Friend. And he steps back and he is going to throw a bomb behind the, the one to the south okay. of Best Friend. And hit him with the splash damage. That's a that's a. Oh, actually, I don't know. So we never rolled to see how many rounds I was affected by the fumble. So I've, it's been two rounds so far. It was one to three. One to three. It's yeah. Been yeah. One D three. Uh, yeah. I rolled a five. So this this will be your last round. That okay. You're affected. By. All right. Uh, so I'll roll the hits, and that is that's a ten to hit. Okay. So and again, that is a minimum damage. So that's five damage. Five okay. fire damage. Okay. But best friend doesn't take any of it. Right. Okay, but that guy just took five points. Oh, and before I of damage. relinquish my time, I want to say hi to my dad, who is a huge fan. I just remembered he's a huge fan of these videos. And I want to say hello to him because he loves these. Aww. Aww. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Marr. Hi, Mr. Marr. <laughs> hi, Dad. It is best friend's turn. Best friend, you just heard a explosion behind you and heard the rat go, Aah! This is impossible. Um, it's not great. Can I? You're deaf and weaponless. What do you want to do? Can I tumble through the enemy's square behind them towards the back? Sure. Uh, hold on. Let me look at my aggro bags. Nope. Negative four. Um, <laughs> shit on a shingle. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hope that they have a limited supply of books up here, and I'm going to jump down. 
Jump down. I mean, I'm going to incur an attack of opportunity either way. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to try and roll acrobatics to see if you just take the tumble, but not the attacks? Yes. All right, try it. 17 on go. the die for a fucking 13. <laughs> All right, all you had to do is beat at CMD. And you did. Yeah! Oh! All right. However, uh, roll a second acrobatics check to see if you land softly. Okay. Nope. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, one. Total. All right. oh. You're prone and you take three points of damage. Oh, okay. No. And you're weaponless. Your weapon is upstairs on top of that shelf. One of my weapons is upstairs, Troy. Well, I'm just keeping people posted. Uh, it is Mrs. O'Lady's turn. Mate. Oh, oh bleed oh, damage. Please. Oh, thank you. That's a good time to speak up. <laughs> <laughs> it is one... 2d20 bleed damage, I think. <laughs> yep, 2d20. Wow. Uh, seems really intense. high. Yeah, for a second, second level. It seems yeah. unusual. Yeah, it does Ooh, seem like a deadly adventure. Ooh, six points of bleed damage! Oh, dude. Bleed! Oh. Bleed! Oh, that's me, right? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Grant, you were, you were taking that exceptionally well. Yeah. You were looking at us like, that sucks for whoever took that damage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was really hoping it'd be Troy. Uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do there. Uh, all right, so you are bleeding out, Mrs. O. May the knowledge you might have gained from reading the book inflame your brain now. And she'll uh, roll a will save. You roll a will save. No, thank you. Let me get my neon green. Oh, boy. Troy's going to roll. Troy's going to roll. You're totally screwed. Ten. Get him. Uh, you fail, and you take 11 points of damage from my mind thrust. Oh, Which? yeah, mind thrust! Which one? The one I, I threw the book at. He's dead. Yeah! yeah! Nice! Yes! He had a family. You could have read that book <laughs> do you, uh, and, and bettered yourself. <laughs> do you move? <laughs> yes. Okay. It's a PSA. Stop throwing books and start reading them. <laughs> Uh, James, new round. Uh, James is going to five foot step into the room and uh, load his crossbow. Okay. Uh, and fire it at this creature in the back here. Uh, that five is, foot step, load and shoot at the creature up top there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say you got a pretty clean shot. Okay. Let's see if we can get anything here. Uh, 15. No. Not gonna do okay. it, buddy. Miss. Uh, and that's it for you. Yeah. Miss. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I see how this works. So uh, the two creatures up top, the one uh, standing on top of the square, uh, or on the square where your weapon is on, just like really, really creepily spider climbs down to you. Oh, no. Oh, oh man. man. And gets right next to you, best friend, and goes in for a sweet bite. Come on. 16? Miss. Yeah. Okay. And then the other one just shoom, shoom, dimension doors over to on top of the uh, bookcase where the one that just died is. And stays there. And it is now Sheila's turn. Come on, Sheila. Sheila is, from where he stands, he is going to say, stay away from my best friend. And he throws another bomb right behind the one that's fighting best friend. Okay. And he has full damage now. Uh, that is that is a six against a five AC. Yeah, yeah, that'll hit. That'll target. hit. And that is, uh, that's six points of damage. Ooh. Okay, six All right. points of splash damage. That definitely <laughs> hurt. Do you want to move it all, Sheila? Uh, that's a lot of bass. Yeah, do you want to move, Seattle? Sheila? Uh, no, yeah, I'm scared now, but I'm going to stay right. <laughs> you're going to stay right there. It is best friend's turn. Best friend, you're deaf. You oh, lost one of your weapons. Shit. And you're bleeding. Why don't we Prone. resolve that bleed damage real quick? Prone as well. Three points of bleed damage. This is not good. So I can't five foot step prone away from this creature, so right. I probably will take an attack of opportunity no matter what I do. 
Will the attack of opportunity resolve before whatever action I attempt to do happens? I don't understand the question, so I yes, won't Yes, the attack of opportunity <laughs> resolves before the action Thank you, triggered. Joseph. I appreciate it. So, then as the coward... Well, no, I have to stand up and... Can I roll? You can crawl away. Okay. Actually, going... you, can't, you can't do that. Because that is a specific, like, rogue talent to be able to crawl, like, crawl away yeah. without incurring an attack. Does anybody remember this from the Glass Cannon podcast? We did this. Oh yes! In the uh, the Battle of Trunal, Lork was trying to do it in that crenellated tower. He was prone, and he was like, "Can I just roll away?" Yeah, you uh, can crawl you very can. slowly, but you'll provoke. You're you're you're. Oh, okay. You're All right. If I'm gonna take the attack either way, I'm going to attempt. I can crawl at like half my speed. I believe so. Okay, I, so I, I'm gonna crawl away 15 feet and see if I even get that far. Do you cry while you're doing it? <laughs> <laughs> it goes to bite you as you crawl. Uh, 17. Miss! Yes! Yes! <laughs> so you're just crawling and crying. Uh, uh, and then now really that I'm away from the creature with that move action, I'm going to cast Cure Light Wounds and spend a blessing to empower it with 50% extra healing. Okay, that will stop the bleeding. And uh, go ahead and give yourself whatever you get. Seven points of healing for nice. a total of 10. This nice. is huge. Oh, huge. lady. Uh, I will uh, take, I assume there's some sort of unattended small object around? Yeah, there's plenty of, there's books everywhere. Right. Deadly, deadly, I'll use, sharp edged I'll books. I'll use my, the deadliest book <laughs> and telekinetic projectile at the one that just you mentioned. You see a copy of Dianetics. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fine. Uh, 11 to hit. So sorry, so sorry. I guess we know what you like. Uh, it is now a new round, and it's James's turn. This thing uh, jumped up over top of him there, like right? 10 feet away and up. didn't even jump, it just right, 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 right. out and appeared. It appeared there. Does James have a shot at him? Or is he too, like, is the angle not give him a good uh, shot? It's not a great angle. Uh, He's it's right gonna, on the edge. It's so. going to get a little bonus, but yeah, you can definitely shoot at it. Um, all right, he's going to get out of the room. If he has any cover, because James is, you know, he's got to okay. get out of there. So uh, he's going to back off about 10 feet and okay. uh, load the crossbow. Backs off, loads the crossbow. He O'Brien's his turn. Uh, all right, the one uh, that is was going after James now moves right up to Sheila Oof. and goes to take a bite out of crime. Ooh, that's going to be a 22. Yeah, that's a hit. All right, you're going to take... Two points of damage. Okay. And you will take bleed damage on your turn. Oh boy. The other one just pew, pew, appears right behind James in the admissions area. I love this. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> pew, pew. It is Sheila's turn. Sheila, this thing now is right up next to you, and you know that throwing any type of bomb would provoke. Well, uh, Sheila is going to take a five-foot step back. Okay. Standing right between O'Lady and Best Friend or to the yeah. right Actually, of no, he's going to take a five-foot step uh, in front of Best Friend Ah, here, okay. And he's going to throw a bomb directly at this creature. Directly at it. <coughs> take it. Uh, that is a 19 against Touch AC. That's a hit. Yeah! <laughs> And that's 10 points of fire damage, baby! It's, uh, it dies. Yeah! 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 Sheila! Uh, it dies, and it is now... It was a real cool mate. <laughs> it is now best friend's turn. I love you more than sh Prince loves Sheila E. Anyway, uh, let's continue. <laughs> Uh, best friend will spend a move action to get up, and as part of that move action, will draw his cold iron kukri, the weapon he found in the asylum when he woke up, and he will run out to defend James's honor. So let me see how many move at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Yeah, I'll get it right next to James with my final move of the round. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you, did you, did you provoke it all there? No. no, 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 not at all. You were able to get by, okay? Yep. Uh, but, 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 Mrs. O'Lady. He thinks that I'm the enemy because I'm a rat, and that's yes. messed up. No, it's it's truly <laughs> it's messed, messed up. up too. That's really messed up. Oh, I see. I really did think that was. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know what you thought. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> My father thought all rats looked alike. <laughs> it's learned behavior. 
Uh, it is Mrs. O'Lady's turn. Uh, roll a well save. You. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, five. Fail. Come on. Uh, you take nine points of damage. Yeah! <laughs> uh, and yeah, you were you could actually see it. Uh, it's a new round. It's James's turn. James, you're directly next to this thing. Roll a perception check. Okay. Uh, four. Yeah, I mean, it's a painful night, man. You think you're this is the end of your life? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thinking that uh, this thing appears behind him, he's gonna whip around, see it. Clever girl. <laughs> And he looks right at it. They're looking like eye to eye, rat to rat, you know? And he's like, I don't know if you've seen this one before. He casts a spell. Let's see if it, uh, oh, and he's got to do the John ski. Uh, and he <laughs> yeah. fails, so he does not cast defensively. So he loses the spell, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and he just, and nothing happens. I don't know if you've seen this one before. What's <laughs> <laughs> Stop me if you're, I don't think Quick you lose the spell. Can you see me? <laughs> yes. Damn it. <laughs> and, he's, and he's just standing there. Uh, he'll, uh, and then I'll just take a five foot step back. Well, you don't even have to do that because you do that whole flourish and the creature like cowers in fear. Oh. Please oh, no, I feel, don't. I feel please. sorry for him now. Please. Please don't hurt me. Oh, oh no. Oh. Best I'm, friend, finish him. Please. <laughs> Please. He's left himself open, the fool. Please, please don't kill me. Typical rat. Wait, wait. We might be able to learn something interesting from this one. Please, you've killed my family. Don't kill me. What is your name? My name is Jenny Two-Tail. <laughs> I can't help but notice you have only one tail. How dare you, I have two. <laughs> And you see, like, growing out of her back are these two wormy-looking tails that kind of move in opposite Ew. directions. Ew. Oh, forgive me. I failed my perception check. Please. Please. I, I mean you no harm. Sense motive. Wait. <laughs> no, I don't think we need to roll a sense motive. I mean you no harm. <laughs> I mean, it, it did mean us harm. Yeah, to, yeah, okay. It could future tense. Yeah. Minutes ago, I meant you harm. But right now, I'm pleading for my life. You've killed my, my mother and my father. Listen, I'm sorry, Jenny. It is Jenny, isn't it? It is Jenny. Listen, I'm sorry about your friends. No, they're my parents. Your parents? Yes, Frederick oh. and Marguerite. Oh, tell. no, that's terrible. That's truly terrible. And I'm sorry also about the, the horrible nickname you've been given because of your physical deformity. That was our family name! Well, in any case... <laughs> I come from a long line of two tails. We will let you go if... Yes. ...on the condition mm. that you agree to stand on my head under a hat. <laughs> Pull God. the hairs on my head to direct me into French cooking. <laughs> In the ways of haute cuisine. Go on. <laughs> now, I haven't cleared this with the rest of the party, but I think it would be a pretty good idea. I, I'm not... I invested zero points in profession cooking. All right, kill her. I couldn't... No, please! <laughs> no, yes, I will be your, your cooking guide. Just what? please don't kill me after... Where did you come I from? Suffered. I came from below this horrible place. When the ground shook, it destroyed our warrens beneath this building, so we were forced to climb up here. My parents and I, my now dead parents, <laughs> Frederick and Marguerite. Miss Two Tails. Yes. I think we can promise to let you go as long as you promise to do something for us. We need you to skitter along further north and spy on a man we know is named Ulver Zandalus and report back to us. What? I, yes, you must, I, or else I'll chop your head off I, right no, please, here. No, please, please. As you can see, we're useless in combat. Useless in combat, but not in stealth. Door. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this. And she, like, appears left and right. But that's about it. Fascinating. Might to hit is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but I will... <laughs> I will do anything for you if you want me to look for this 
creature, I, I will, I will move north and, and look for this Zen de But to- there are beasts roaming the hallways. Oh, please tell us more about these beasts and how to avoid them. Well, I have avoided them by coming here to this library, the only sanctuary that we've found since our warrens were destroyed. And yet you did not read the books. You hurled them at our faces. I never learned to read! <laughs> Frederick and Marguerite were to teach me tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> oh, no. We had talked about oh, it for weeks. <laughs> one day. One, 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 one more day. And oh, then... how I looked forward to the day that I could learn oh. to read. Oh, no. Would you like to learn? What? Would you like to learn to read? I would love that. <laughs> you would report back on Sandalus to us. And I will hook you on phonics, my friend. <laughs> you done been hooked up? <laughs> Hook. All right. So let me get this straight. <laughs> I'm to continue north looking for Ulv Zandalus. Yes, he should be the leader of a group of people in orbament robes. That's that's a yellowish orange, in case you're unfamiliar. How do you spell that? Oh, oh. It doesn't Wait, matter, I can't read! read. <laughs> Bottle cap. Bottle cap. That's really good. The best thing you've done all night. What? What? Describe this Zandalus to me. And don't use any fancy words. Well, we have his file, right? We have we his, do file, his file. Let sure me take file. a look at that file. We have a, pol- <laughs> <there's> a Polaroid. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense! <laughs> Lots of symbols! I like see his scribbles! <laughs> we, I re- we read some salient details from the file to oh, Jenny yes. Two Tails. All right. Okay. So here's... <laughs> let me make sure I'm getting this correct. I will... I, my life will be spared, unlike my parents. Yes. <laughs> if I continue north and look for word of Zandalus and bring it to you. Yes. All right. And if you bring it, come back alive with good intelligence, and if you are very well behaved, I will teach you to read. All right. That seems more than fair. And what will you do whilst I do this? We will continue on and read the things in this library. Okay. We'll have a list of recommendations for when you can read. Is, I, is there a book on the adoption of rat people? I'd love to be your parent. I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have directed that at Mrs. O'Lady, I'm sorry. It was rather callous of me. I, I have but one request. Yes? If I return here, with or without news of Zandalus but alive, my parents will need a burial. I don't know how to spell their names for the tombstone. (laughs) Would you help me? I would be honored. Their names were Magritte. What were their names? Frederick and Marguerite. Why were you on a first name basis with your parents? I know my parents' first names. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but I I can't. Come on, Matthew. This is why. This what is sort why, of lying like, scum knows their parents' first names? <laughs> the deal is off, killer! <laughs> no, please! All right, I will. I will do this. You know what I have asked, and I know what you have asked. I would ask you to write me a list to remember, but <laughs> again, it would be useless in my hands. But I think I have it. All right, I'll. I'll see you later. And she goes through. <laughs> the north door of this room. Of the library? Of the library. The library. <laughs> and you do see now, as, you, as the fight has ended, and Jenny Two Tails, son of Frederick and Marguerite Two Tails. Daughter. Daughter. Daughter, sorry. Daughter. She doesn't know the difference between the two words. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> takes off uh, to the north, solo and you are left in this gigantic, empty library. Two bodies lie on the ground, parents of Jenny Two-Tail. Innocence. 
in a sense, in a war. <laughs> this they, is your favorite thing. You try to, to kill us, and you're like, <laughs> this <laughs> innocent creature. Innocence you're in a war. You're trying to us into the innocence of the creatures that just tried to kill no us. They had no interest in being a part of. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they, we, they, this, the earthquake did disturb their habitat, and they didn't know. That didn't like, mean they had to come after us. Yeah, we would have we been very reasonable. Yeah. Uh, James is immediately going to the books. He doesn't care about the bodies. He's yeah. trying to scan as quickly as he can to see if there's anything that jumps out about uh, the Elder Mythos, anything of that roll nature. A, roll a perception check. I mean, there are a ton can I join? of books in here. Yeah, yeah. Four. Four. This has been a night. 25. Everybody can roll perception. You're oh. looking through here. 25. 25. Ooh. Eight. Uh, 25, also. Okay. So, best friend and James, uh, maybe you're still emotionally scarred by being deafened and murderers of two innocent <coughs> rattling parents. Uh, but best, excuse me, uh, Sheila and Mrs. O'Lady, you see, like, this library boasts an impressive collection of texts covering advanced psychological theories, treatments for certain diseases, common medical practices, and also matters of regional record, things that have happened in the area. You see, if you open a lot of the books, many of the copies have the stamp of Rosenport's Cinco Macti School of Sciences, like they were borrowed from there and added to this library, Ooh. or taken from there and added to this library. They have the stamp of this. This old lady, you're walking along, and you see one book that sort of jumps out amongst all the others, and it jumps out for two reasons. One, up in the right-hand corner of the book is sort of an embossed image of James. What? The second reason. <laughs> that it jumps out at you is that it's just the cover of the book. All of the pages with inside of it have been torn out purposefully. How dare they? What's the title of the book? It says, The Life and Death of Atticus Grimm. What? By James Netherford. What? What? And we'll see you in Indianapolis. <laughs> oh!